Typically, if you're in the market for a pair of premium ANC headphones, people usually end up asking if they should go with Bose or Sony. Now, you really can't go wrong with either the Bose NC700s or the new Sony 1000XM4s. But there are some very important differences between these two headphones to take into consideration. So today we're going to be comparing the Bose NC700s to the new Sony 1000XM4s. But I'm also going to be throwing in the Bose QC35s for the people who might be thinking about upgrading. Now, first off, let's talk about price. The Sony 1000 XM4s retail for $350, whereas the Bose NC700s have a retail price of $400. But since they're a year old now, they're starting to go on sale from time to time. And then there are the Bose QC35s, which have a retail price of $350, but they can usually be found on sale for $300 or even a little less sometimes. But nonetheless, if you want to pick any of these headphones up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to learn more about any of these headphones, please watch their full reviews because we're only going to be going over their main differences. But now let's talk about the included carrying cases here. All of these headphones come included with decent hard shell cases that are going to have no problem protecting your headphones if you do plan on traveling or commuting a lot with your headphones. And both the Sony's and NC700's have storage compartments for your cables, which is a nice touch. But I do want to point out that Bose also sells a separate carrying case for the NC700's that will give you an additional 40 hours of battery life. Now, most people aren't going to need this, but if you are a constant traveler, you might want to take this into consideration. But now, let's talk about the headphones themselves. Build quality wise, all of these headphones are on par with one another. They feel very sturdy in your hands and they all have zero cracking or squeaking whenever you handle them. But there are some major material differences to take into consideration. The 1000XM4s have a mostly slate finish to them and there's a hint of soft touch on the caps of their ear cups. Whereas the Bose QC35s have a mostly smooth body, but the very unique feature about them is that they have a hint of Alcantara underneath their headband, which feels very nice. But then there are the Bose NC700s, which feel very different when they're in your hands when compared to the Sony's. With the NC700s, you've got smooth plastic ear cups, and then you've got this exposed stainless steel headband that's mostly wrapped in very padded silicone. But in my opinion, the biggest build quality difference between these headphones has got to be their leatherette. The Bose NC700s have amazing feeling synthetic leatherette, and the leatherette on the Bose QC35s is a close second. Whereas the leatherette on the Sony's feels very synthetic. It feels good enough to get the job done, but when compared to the leatherette on Bose's headphones, it feels very plasticky. So overall, when they're in your hands and on your head, the Bose NC700s feel more luxurious than the Sony's. But when it comes to their design, the NC700s can be a little polarizing. Personally, I don't mind how they look, but I just wish their headband wasn't so bulbous. Whereas the headband on the Sony's is a lot more low profile, making them look sleeker. Because the headband on the Sony's is still more low profile than the headband on the QC35s. Now, when it comes to fit, all of these headphones are big head approved because none of them have a lot of clamping force. But the QC35s do have noticeably less clamping force than these other two headphones. And the Bose QC35s are also a little more lightweight than these other two headphones, weighing in at 240 grams. Whereas the Sony's weigh in at 254 grams and the Bose NC700s weigh in at 264 grams. Nonetheless, all of these headphones are lightweight because most premium ANC headphones in this category weigh in between 270 to 290 grams. So thanks to their lightweight, all of these headphones are easy to forget that you have on and they aren't super noticeable on your head when you're walking around with them on. However, when it comes to their ear pads, there are some major differences. The ear pads on the 1000 XM4s have been made slightly more spacious than the ear pads on the 1000 XM3s. 
So these headphones should be able to fit a little more people. But if you have larger ears or ears that stick out a lot, then you're definitely still better off going with either of these Bose headphones. Now, Sony's headphones fit me just fine, but I will admit having the extra breathing room on the Bose NC700s is really nice. But another important thing to point out here is that since the earpads on the Bose NC700s have less surface area coming in contact with your skin than these other two headphones, the NC700s do heat up a little slower than these other two headphones. Now, these other two headphones don't have an overheating problem, but the NC700s do stay cooler for longer. So overall, all of these headphones fit great, you can wear them for hours on end without any problems, and the Sonys should be able to fit most people. But if you do have larger ears or ears that stick out a lot, then you are better off going with the Bose NC700s. But now let's talk about tech specs. Both the Sony's and Bose NC700s charge via a USB-C port, as they should. Whereas the Bose QC35s charge via a micro USB port, which is an inconvenience at this point. And when it comes to their battery life, both of Bose's headphones will get the job done, but I do feel that they both could be doing better. Both of Bose's headphones have an advertised battery life of 20 hours, which is a little below average, and we like to see at least a battery life of 25 hours. Whereas the Sony's have an advertised battery life of 30 hours with their ANC turned on, and you can also stretch out their battery life up to 38 hours if you use them with their ANC turned off. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, Thankfully, all of these headphones can be connected to two devices at the same time, so you can easily hot swap from one device to another, and this can be a big deal for power users out there. Now, this is a big deal because this is actually a new feature for the Sony 1000 XM4s. Now, overall, it's not a huge deal that your headphones can do this, but it is very nice to be able to. And when it comes to watching movies or videos on your phone, all of these headphones have a zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device, which is always great. But one very important but obvious thing that I do want to point out here is that you can still use a wired connection with all of these headphones because all of these headphones still have audio jacks. Now, I do like to point this out because some manufacturers are starting to remove the audio jack on some of their headphones like Apple did with their Beats Solo Pro. And unfortunately, you still sometimes do need to use a wired connection with your headphones, whether you're a content creator or even a casual user. But don't worry, Apple will be more than happy to charge you $35 for an audio to lightning port cable. But now, let's talk about listening to music with these headphones, because when it comes to sound, Bose's headphones are very different from Sony's headphones. Now, both the Bose QC35s and Bose NC700s are better suited for people who like a neutral or vocals-focused EQ. The bass on both of Bose's headphones isn't going to physically rattle your head all that much. The bass on Bose's headphones is mostly just on the audible side. It resonates a little bit, but it doesn't resonate as much as some other headphones out there that can regularly induce goosebumps. Now, even though the Bose NC700s now have an adjustable EQ and you can raise the bass on these headphones, even if you were to turn them up to 10, they still aren't going to physically rattle your head. So, for this reason, a lot of people will might say that Bose's headphones sound flat, but they don't they're catering to a different audience. Because where the Bose NC700s do outshine the Sony's is when it comes to their soundstage and instrument separation. The Bose NC700s sound more open than the Sony 1000 XM4s, making it feel like you're more engulfed in your music. Whereas even though the soundstage on the Sony's is decent, they do sound a little more narrow. But at the end of the day, I do feel the Sony's are going to be able to please most people. Thanks to their fully customizable EQ, you can make them sound however you want. If you want a neutral or vocals focused EQ like the Bose, you can do that, 
Or if you like a bass heavy EQ, then you can also do that. And unlike the Bose, the bass on the Sony's is going to physically rattle your head a decent amount, and it should be able to satiate most people. Now, personally, I just like using these headphones while in their stock EQ, but I do like switching them over to a bass-heavy EQ when I'm going to watch a movie with them, because all of that extra bass does give you an extra level of immersiveness to whatever you're watching. Whereas with the Bose, you don't get the same level of immersiveness when you're watching a movie with them because of their more tamed bass. So overall, the Bose NC700s are great if you want the better soundstage and better detail. Whereas with the Sonys, they should be able to please most people, but if you want to physically feel your bass, then these are the way to go. Now, when it comes to the media controls on these headphones, the Bose QC35s are using physical buttons, and this might actually be a deciding factor for some people who just don't like using touchpads on their headphones. Now, the touchpad on both of these headphones are fine, but personally, the touchpad on the Bose isn't my favorite, because it is rather small, but I also don't like that you constantly have to flick this touchpad up or down to adjust your volume. Because with the touchpad on the Sony's, you can actually swipe up or down and hold to continuously raise or lower your volume, which does feel sleeker. But overall, both of these headphones have easy to use and accurate touchpads. Now, something the Sony's do have that the Bose don't is that they have wear sensors. So when you take your headphones off, they'll pause your music, and then when you put them back on, they'll start playing your music again. Now, personally, I don't care for wear sensors, so I just turned them off, but I thought I'd still adjust them. But now, let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. Now, first off, both the Bose NC700 and Sony 1000 XM4s outclass the Bose QC35s when it comes to ANC performance, specifically because these headphones have significantly less cabin pressure than the Bose QC35s, which do end up giving me headaches. It might not happen to everyone, but it does to me. So for me, the real ANC comparison is going to be between these other two headphones. Now, the ANC on both of these headphones have very little to no cabin pressure, but the Sony's do have a little less cabin pressure, making them more comfortable. The ANC on either of these headphones doesn't change how your music sounds, and they also block out an impressive amount of noise. But so that you can see for yourself, we're going to jump into an ANC test. So, like you may have just seen, both of these headphones block out an impressive amount of noise. But ultimately, the Bose NC700s do manage to block out a little more noise here in this control test where these headphones are blocking out the same audio samples. When it came to blocking out road noise or the constant low frequency sound, there's a high pitched tone to the Sony's in the background, whereas the Bose don't. And when it came to blocking out chatter or the random higher frequency sound, even though it might look like the Bose and Sony are blocking out the same amount of noise, the Sony's are actually letting in a hair more noise then. So as of right now with the Bose NC700s running their 1.5.1 firmware, block out a little more noise than the Sony 1000 XM4s running their 2.0.6 firmware, which is the latest firmware at the time of this recording. Now, ultimately, I am splitting hairs here because most people aren't going to notice these minute differences. 
And personally, I do prefer the ANC on the Sony 1000XM4s over the Bose NC700s because of their reduced carbon pressure. But like I mentioned in their full review, the Sony 1000XM3s running their 4.5.2 firmware do block out more noise than the 1000XM4s. And they also block out more noise than the Bose NC700s. So I do feel that we are gonna have to revisit the ANC performance on the Sony 1000XM4s after they get another firmware update. It's still great, but we know Sony can do better. But now let's talk about the ambient mode on these headphones. You can make it so that these headphones let in some of the surrounding sounds around you, which can be very useful for when you're walking around the city, or so that you can easily hear when someone calls your name when you're watching The Legend of Korra at home, which is actually a lot better than I remember. Now, the ambient mode on both of these headphones sounds very natural, there's zero hissing in the background, and both of these headphones do a great job of blocking out wind noise, when walking outdoors. But unfortunately, the Bose QC35s don't have an ambient mode. You can reduce their active noise cancellation, but you can't actually have them pump in sound. Now ultimately, I do prefer the ambient mode on the Sonys because the Sonys have an active ambient mode, meaning that they'll actively block out any spikes in loud noises. But so that you can see what I'm talking about, we're gonna jump into a demo. Slight headphone warning. So like you may have just seen, when the Sony's detected that spike in loud noise, they turned off their ambient mode, and when the noise stopped, they turned their ambient mode back on. Personally, I love when headphones have an active ambient mode because it does save you from jump scares, and it really does come in handy when you're working at home and your dog starts barking when the UPS man comes around. Whereas with the Bose, they let in everything. So if your dog starts barking with the Bose, all of that is going to get pumped in as well. Now, one new feature that Sony is really trying to push on the Sony 1000 XM4 is their new speak to chat feature, which I like to think of as an extension of their ambient mode and it works a little like this. Hello there. So this is speak to chat. Basically, whenever I start talking, the headphones will automatically lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you so that you can talk to someone without even to have to touch your headphones. And then once you're done talking, you can either wait for the headphones themselves to start playing music again, or you can double tap on the touchpad. But ultimately for me, speak to chat is just a gimmick that I'm just not going to use. Now, speak to chat doesn't get activated when other people are talking around you. It does a really good job of rejecting that. But if you do decide to use speak to chat on these headphones, then you have to be completely silent. Speak to chat on these headphones is going to get activated if you're singing along to your music, if you're thinking out loud, even very quietly. And speak to chat on these headphones is also going to get activated when you start laughing, which can be a really big problem, especially if you're listening to the Flagrant 2 podcast. So the days that I did try to use speak to chat on these headphones, they would just pause my music every time I muttered a few words, becoming more of a nuisance rather than helpful. So if you are going to have a quick conversation with someone, Personally, I do prefer to use quick attention on these headphones, where if you fully cover their touchpad, they're going to lower the volume of your music and let in all of the ambient sound around you, like this. But the problem with quick attention is that you gotta constantly keep their touchpad covered. So if you're gonna try to have a conversation with someone like this, 
this both looks and feels very awkward. All Sony has to do is that they have to change it so that when you have the touchpad on their headphones fully covered for a full second, they're going to get locked into quick attention mode. You can have your conversation with your hands free like a normal human. And then when you're done, all you got to do is just double tap on their touchpad and then the headphones will go back to normal again. And I'm making a big deal about this because the Bose NC700s have a very similar feature which is called the conversation mode and it works a little like this. So like you may have just seen, once conversation mode on the Bose was activated, you can just let go of their button and your hands are free. So I just feel speak to chat is an over-engineered solution to a very simple problem that Sony can easily fix through a small change to quick attention, which they can easily add through a software update. But now here's the microphone test. Now, technically, the microphone on the Sony 1000 XM4s has been improved from the microphone on the Sony 1000 XM3s, but my voice still doesn't sound super clear. However, this microphone is doing a really good job of blocking out that AC unit. Because if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear that AC unit. But if we were to switch over to the Sony 1000 XM4s, you can't hear it as much. Now, even though the microphone on the Bose QC35 doesn't do as good of a job blocking out that AC unit, my voice does sound clearer, which I do feel is more important. But then, there's the microphone on the Bose NC700s. My voice just doesn't sound super clear. This microphone is also doing a great job of blocking out that AC unit. Because again, if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear that AC unit. But if we switch back over to the Bose NC700s, you can barely hear it. So, if you do plan on taking a lot of phone calls with your headphones, then the Bose NC700s are clearly the way to go. Because even though the microphone on the Sony 1000 XM4s has been improved, it still pales in comparison to the Bose NC700s. Now, before we jump into the final verdict, the last thing that I do want to address here is going to be software updates. Now, over the last few months, software updates on all of Sony's headphones have been very straightforward without any issues, and they've actually added features to their headphones over the course of their lifetime. Whereas with Bose, on the other hand, over the last 18 months or so, their software updates have been a little spotty. Sometimes they take a really long time to install or they take multiple attempts and sometimes there are bugs and I have encountered some bugs with my headphones. Now Bose's customer support is very quick to help you but people just want their stuff to work and personally I do get nervous every time that I have to update these headphones. So, I'm just saying, you might have to reach out to Bose's customer support if you get hit by a bad software update. But with all that being said, both the Sony 1000 XM4s and Bose NC700s are a pair of top-tier ANC headphones, and you can't go wrong with either one. But there are some crucial differences between them to take into consideration. First off, if you want to physically feel your bass, then you are better off with the Sonys. Or if you want that wider soundstage, you should go with the Bose. Now, even though the Bose NC700s are blocking out a little more noise than the Sonys, personally, I still prefer the ANC on the Sony 1000 XM4s because they have a little less cabin pressure. But we know they can do better. Now, even though the Sonys should fit most people just fine, if you have larger ears or ears that stick out a lot, you're still better off going with the Bose NC700s. And besides, having that extra room with the Bose is very nice. And finally, there's the microphone on these headphones. If you do plan on taking lots of phone calls, then the Bose NC700s are a no-brainer here. 
Now, for the people that are still holding on to the Bose QC35s, I say it's definitely time for an upgrade, specifically because these newer ANC headphones block out more noise with less cabin pressure. And whether you're a commuter or not, the ambient mode on these headphones are very helpful. But when it comes to choosing between one of these two headphones, one isn't outright better than the other. It's all going to come down to your needs. But I will say, Sony, don't get comfortable. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video. So hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick another products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below. And you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.